Whether you're an accountant, an engineer, or a teacher, there's one skill that's gonna prove invaluable in this new world of AI. One skill that can give you the edge to your current position, increase your productivity, or help you land that new job you're applying for. Without this skill, you may miss out on many of the advantages offered by solutions like ChatGPT, Bing Chat, or Microsoft Copilot. And that skill is prompt engineering. And in this video, I plan to help you go from zero to 100 and becoming well-versed with generative AI models and how to use plain English to get what you want without needing to code. Overall, I'm gonna give you four actionable steps to make it from prompt engineering novice to prompt engineering master. Plus, I'll provide a bonus for anyone looking to make the leap to AI if you stay to the end of the video. I've also provided steps throughout to help you navigate in the video in case you wanna jump around. All right, let's move on to number one. So first off, what is prompt engineering and what are the different types of prompts that can be used? Simply put, prompt engineering is the ability to craft an input that can be provided to a large language model. Like ChatGPT, and then receive an output. The focus here is on crafting and fine tuning of the prompt. But what types of prompts are available to you? Well, there are many, but here are a few of the most important. Number one, instruction-based prompts. These are straightforward. They essentially allow you to provide instructions to the model to perform a task that you desire. An example might be asking ChatGPT to perform a calculation or perform a review of a paper you're writing. Number two, there's also context-based prompts. These allow you to provide context to help the LLM have a better understanding of what it is you're asking for. This type of prompt is always gonna prove valuable because generative AI performs best when specifics are given rather than broad contextual information. And of course, there are many other options, but the final one I'll mention here is the use role-based prompts. These prompts allow you to instruct the AI to act like the role which you define. This can be incredibly helpful while also combining the role with the required context. A great example here is creating a marketing role and providing context to the prompt to help possibly create better copy or just as a content generator to help you have ideas for something you're creating. All right, so hopefully that gives you a few good examples of prompts you can use. But now let's move on to number two, tips and tricks. So let's go back to role-based prompts for a moment and talk about a great tip I found called the 5Ws framework. This is great because it allows you to refine the role in such a way that you can get even better prompts. The framework goes like this and you'll notice it's ties to traditional writing. Number one, who. Tell the model who you want it to be. Give it a specific role. Number two, what. This refers to the action you want the prompt to perform. Number three, when. This is the timeline that you give for the task or the what to be completed. Number four, where. Give the prompt a location or context. And finally, number five, provide the prompt reason and motivation for what it is trying to accomplish. I've found great success using this method. Try it out the next time you're working in a generative AI program like ChatGPT. All right, only number three, experiment and iterate. Now that you have an idea of what prompts are and some of the different types available to use, let's jump into refining your inputs to get exactly what you're looking for. But before we continue, it's important to note that you should always fact check the responses you receive from ChatGPT or other LLMs. This is important and recommended by OpenAI as these models can be prone to AI hallucinations. So you've gone through the five W's and you've received a response back from the model and maybe it's not exactly what you're looking for. So what now? Iterate. Go through your prompt and tweak it to see if the output changes. As you make adjustments, notice how the response changes each time. Continue to do this until you finally have the response you're looking for. A great acronym to remember here is garbage in, garbage out, or G-I-G-O. It's important to always provide the best possible information to the prompt. Otherwise, it will prove difficult to receive the output you're expecting. And finally, number four. This one is especially important because without it, you'll struggle to know the nuances of the model and how you can apply different prompt techniques. Of course, I'm referring to practice. You need to spend time with the model, but how can you do this practically? I offer you the following solution. Create a simple document. This can be an Excel spreadsheet or a piece of paper. Doesn't matter. What matters is the information you will gather. Now, write down a list of tasks you perform every day for both your job and in your personal life. Then, and this is important, begin going through each one and brainstorm different ways you can use generative AI to solve common problems 
you encounter. Now, of course, you're not gonna be able to use it for everything, and that's okay, but you should have a list of things you can get started on. With this list, begin experimenting with AI and use the information we went over to practice your prompt engineering. If you do this every day, you'll not only have a better understanding of how to interact with AI, but you'll also have a leg up on the competition. And who knows, maybe you'll have an increased interest in using other AI applications as a result. As a bonus, I wanted to provide information on how much prompt engineers make if you made it this far, along with other skills you may need to make the leap. Current prompt engineer postings are providing between 170K to 300K a year. Of course, this is dependent on your experience and skills, but that should give you a ballpark of what to expect. Additionally, it's important to note that most of these jobs require skills, like having a background in coding, machine learning, or learning how to control prompts that will give you a huge advantage over the competition. Even if you're applying for a more entry level position until you can work up to that higher salary role. So continue to use prompts and complement that skill with other knowledge relating to LLMs, machine learning, and data analysis to help you prepare for the role. Okay, so for those of you at this point in the video, first off, thank you, and second off, congrats. You have what you need to take the first step on your journey in AI. Who knows, maybe machine learning and prompt engineering will spark your interest in this new field if it's the first time you're really diving in deep. If that's you, then subscribe to our channel. My goal is to provide the best information to help you understand AI solutions and how you can either enhance your life, job, or pivot to a new career. All right, now get out there and keep learning.